Welcome to the Mayo Soccer Podcast live here in Umbro Park, Mile Bush. Uh, I am your host, Paul O'Malley, and I'm joined this evening on camera. Uh, to my left here is Stuart Tynan. Then we have Joe Faulkner and Pat O'Sullivan. Lads, how are we feeling about uh, this live podcast? Showing your faces uh, to the world here on our live show this evening. Yeah, look forward to it. I just hope the numbers don't go down now that they know what we look like. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, how are you fixed? I'm good now, Paul. How are you? Oh, it's fantastic. We've been, we've been excited this for quite a while. Absolutely, yeah. yeah no, it's, it's all been building towards something like this, uh, the podcast, the last couple of years. So thanks to everybody who's tuned in. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, The Ranch Sports and Music Bar, Clamaris, uh, for their continued support of the podcast. Be sure to visit uh, The Ranch Sports and Music on Instagram to find out more about booking your party event at The Ranch. Uh, we're here in the, as I said, the lovely uh, Umbro Park here in the, the Mayo Football League committee room I think this is uh, we have the Super League trophy here but, uh, beside us Joe is keeping a close eye on it there it might be the closest he gets to it all year uh, <laughs> can I touch it <laughs> we uh, will jump right in here to the podcast um, and uh, look at, we'll keep an eye out as well for any I have the, the yoke here in front of me keeping an eye on any listeners questions comments uh, that might be deemed uh, appropriate to read out live on the air. Uh, so we'll look first here at the look back first at the 2023 Super League table. Of course, Casabar Celtic champions, unbeaten champions, uh, Ballina Town then runners up seven points behind them, and then a bit of a gap uh, down to Ballyhane, Westport United, KK United, Con Rangers, Manola, Cross Malina, Glen Hest, and Straden Foxford United. Uh, at the bottom of the pile then going down um, reflecting on last season uh, I'll go to you first there Stuart what, what, what did you make of the year, the year overall? It was, it was probably the year of Casabar Celtic to be honest I mean I think we all had them as uh, potential champions coming into, to, coming into the season but we knew I think very quickly uh, that Celtic were going to be the team to stop I think one of the early games early doors was the game against, I think it was a way to battle that town in Balik. I think Celtic were down to 10 men as well and they ended up winning 2-1. I think we knew after that that the only way Celtic were not winning this title is they if they imploded. And that didn't happen. They finished the season unbeaten as champions. And looking at the table then as well, it was, it was seven points to battle that town. Like it's, it's Celtic, last season was Celtic, it was battle that town. Then you had a gap to Ballyhane at Westport. That was effectively everybody else. And uh, I think that you might see a similar situation this season. Joe, it was uh, Con Rangers' first season back in the Super League, I think, since 2016 last year. Uh, how did you find that experience? Much different division than the one you left behind all those years ago, I suppose. Yeah, there's obviously a huge step up um, going up to the Super League from the Premier Division. Uh, we're doing quite happy with mid-table. I, I was just looking at the table there and I kind of noticed that the top five teams are probably at the start of the season finishing the top five, so very familiar Looking table with the Ballinas, the Ballyhanes, the Westports, the Celtics, um, Knock would have been ranked in the top five last season, so that's where they finished. And um, yeah, the bottom five would have been kind of teams that would have been, we'd say, in a relegation uh, sort of um, chat before the season. So obviously, ourselves and Manola ended up uh, in cross mine, in fairness, got 18 points to Dunwap. They, um, they got well away from it in the end, so. Um, yeah, I think it's a very familiar looking table and uh, one that will kind of look similar over the last three or four seasons. Pat, you were doing battle elsewhere uh, in the Premier League with um, with Ballon Robe last year, uh, but do you have any thoughts on uh, on last year's yeah, Super League? I suppose just looking at promoted teams last season in Cross Malina and Con, they both picked up an awful lot of points early in the season and failed as the year went on, but they got enough done probably in the first half of the games. So obviously maybe the, the bounce have been promoted, maybe a lot of confidence that they, they hit the ground running in the top division, but just goes to show it's a grind up there um, and it's, it's, a, it's a long season and I suppose luckily for the two of them, they, they got enough done as I say early on, but uh, hopefully um, Ballon Roque can do something similar this year. Absolutely, there's no easy games in the Super League uh, and what a season it was, Caspar uh, Celtic coming out as champions, Glen Hest and Straden Foxford uh, going down. But looking ahead now to the 2024 season, we'll do, as we always do on these preview shows, um, we had a fantastic reaction to our League 1 and League 2 show uh, last week and the Premier League podcast, preview podcast that went up last night. Uh, excellent response to that, so be, be sure to check that out on Spotify if you haven't yet. Uh, there's still uh, there's still good mileage in, in both of those shows, I'd say. We haven't got too much wrong out of them yet. Um, so we'll move swiftly on then to the, the start. The first team in the alphabet in the Super League this year. It's Ballina Town, 
last year um, cup winners I think they won was it the Super Cup, Super cup that's right uh, finished second in the table uh, seven points off Celtic in the end suffered three defeats uh, Celtic Westport United and KK beating them um, they did score 59 goals um, a quarter of them were against SNF over two games though it wor- might be worth pointing out there um, and what one more thing for Ballinat Town as, as we can see there on the screen it's uh, second place the last three years always the bridesmaid never the bride it seems in the uh, in this decade for Ballina so far their 43 points tally last year would have been enough to win it in 2022 so uh, Joe I'll go to you first there Ballina Town in the road for me there in uh, in Knockmore um, how do you have how do you size them up coming into this season yeah I think Ballina are very strong um, we were just going through the team earlier on and um, I have so much quality in Daska trainer and um, like we're just going through exactly like they've Dylan McKee in midfield, they've Raf Kataro, Ushin Taig on the wing, Jamie Cawley on the wing, Benny Lavelle there behind us got 26 goals last season. He's been top scorer for the last few seasons in the, the Mayo Super League. Um, yeah, it's just it's a really good squad in Ballinat. They've Fergal Ford has come in this year and um, they're kind of going with a few more youth players and than they might have done with, say, previously. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of settle in because squad wise is probably where they were slightly behind Celtic last year like 43 points was a very good total um, over 18 games like as you said they would have won the Super League the previous year with that amount of points so they'd been quite happy with 43 if you offered that to them before the season but um, yeah it'll be interesting I think when they have their best 11 out in the field I think if you go through the teams in the league I think they're the one team that possibly could have a better 11 than Celtic on their day they bet them in the Super Cup semi-final uh, last um, August in, in Celtic Park 2-1. So it is a really good ban at 11, but it's probably just the question marks then over if the likes of Benny or Raph or Jamie Cawley, the Jill McKee, the, the key players got injured, how they kind of adapt to that throughout the season over the 18 games. Absolutely. Uh, sure, so Joe talking there about strength and depth for Ballina. You know, you look at the additions there to the squad in the off season. You know, you have the likes of Jamie Moyles coming back to the club, Mark Duffy, a councillor, Mark Duffy, I should say, um, providing competition for Emmett Payton and goal. You know, when you compare the depth they have now to, to last year and and against the depth that a team like Celtic would have, is there enough there to challenge? Oh, there's definitely enough there to challenge. I think Ballina have been very unlucky the last couple of years. I mean, go all the way since when they last won the Super League title in 2018. In 2019, Casper said had a fantastic season. In 2021, Ballyhane went unbeaten as well. And then the following year, Ballyhane had another great season going back to back. And then last year, you see Celtic having a great season. So Ballina have all have been there or thereabouts the last four or five years, but have just have just come against against a team who has done done that a little bit better. And I expect Ballina to go push Celtic even closer this year. Pat, uh, as I as I said there, as I made the um, the point that Ballina Town have always been the bridesmaid, never the bride. What do they have to do to make that walk up the aisle? Ah, look, it's it's going to be very very hard. Like they're probably the best equipped to take the title from Castlebar Celtic, but I mean, what was it? It's fifty points Celtic got last year. That's that's a mammoth total to reach. Um, eighteen wins, two draws, sixteen wins, yeah. sixteen wins out of eighteen games. Yeah. Yeah. Only dropped yeah. four points yeah. all year. So. I mean, yeah, they've made some great additions there. Jamie Moyes in particular is one. I think he's a great player. Um, but Celtic, I think Celtic won't have to drop off a small bit, which is possible. And if they do, I think Banna definitely have a great chance of, of taking that Super League title from them. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we will move on then to Ballinrobe Town, promoted from the Premier Division last year. Um, they have tackled every challenge uh, that's been in their path since coming back in 2021. Uh, if we take a look at their, their previous positions there, uh, you know, the journey up for them, and, and Pat, you would have been there all the way through that. Um, you, you know, everything that's been in their way, uh, they've, they've, they've gotten through so far. But is this, Pat, in, from, from your point of view, is this a challenge that might be a little bit too great for them this, this year? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> How could you? <laughs> no, look, I, I'm living in Ballinrobe now seven or eight years. Like, and I remember that one of the first things I noticed when I got involved with the club, with the academy, was you know not having a junior club in a town the size of Ballinrobe. I just couldn't get my head around it. Like, so you know it was fantastic when we got the team back together and got into League Two. But the, I mean, I remember from the very first year it was all about Super League. We had to get the Super League. We had to get there as quick as possible. 
I don't think any of us thought we'd get there in three years, but I do think Ballinrobe, well, they're a club, they're on, they're, they're on the right trajectory, and um, I think we should be a Super League club. And can we stay up there this year? I hope we can. I think it's going to be very, very difficult. Um, you know, we've, we've had challenges all three years, but this is going to be a different level. Um, but we've a lot of quality, we've a lot of good players, we've a lot of good Super League players, in my opinion. So I think certainly, um, you know, the likes of Johnny Lawrence, Danny O'Toole, Oshin Connolly, Sean Shotnessy, these are quality, quality players. Like, so I think we'll, we'll hold our own. Joe, your thoughts on, uh, on Ballinrobe Town coming into this Super League season? Yeah, it's a big season for them. Um, I suppose when you get promoted, um, you have the, the sort of energy in the squad from uh, from confidence is up from all your results to the previous season, so they'll have to use that early on. And they'll have games like against uh, teams around them, like the Clare Morrises, the Cross Miners, the Manolas, the ourselves. You know, those sort of games that are six pointers for them early in the season and if results go against them you can straight away be caught in a sort of relegation battle so I suppose for for Van Rogan, for Zabby in particular he'd be hoping to get a few points on the board early on um, it is a, a huge step up from the Premier Division and uh, there's times in the Premier Division when you might need your whole squad to go away and win games whereas this year you turn up at four or five clubs in the Super League with, with missing players and you will you know you could take awful hammers at Cross Minor just had an off day against Banal last year. Um, mid season got better was a thirteen nil um at a time. So like the likes of Ban Robe and teams coming up, like y- your squad will be tested. I, I think I've said that to you before, Joe. Like I mean, you know, we were in a, a, a race for the title in the Premier League last year and I remember seeing that result coming in. I checked the Clare Morris team or the cross line the team and I was like, oh, they must have been missing players. They weren't missing many players, they weren't missing any. And they got absolutely annihilated. Um and that was a real eye opener for me uh, into what we'd be facing this year. Yeah, exactly. And that, that can be, for a club coming up, that's probably the big thing for the season is how strong can you be uh, over the season and um, then how do you do in those tight games if you have to go away to Manola and you need the points on the board or you have to go, you're at home to cross line or something that's a six pointer, like there's pressure on those games and that because you could look ahead down the picture and say, well, we've Celtic away next week, we've Ballina at home, and you might be saying, we're not getting points out of one or two them games unless we play unbelievably well. So, like, there is that in, in it, and there's that pressure on them. So, it'd be interesting how Zabby sort of approaches that. He's coming from a very high base, but, um, like, it, it will be a lot of pressure on him. If, you know, if, after four or five games, if they have no points, how does the squad react after winning so many games over the previous year? So, yeah, it'll be very interesting for Balno. I, I think when they had the few tough games at the Clare Morrises and that over the last 12 months, they, they never really ground out uh, a win against them. And they'll have a lot of them kind of games now this year, like when they have uh, to go to the likes of Clare Morris, Manola, cross line. Can they learn how to grind them games out and get the results because once you get points on the board then you're kind of you're in a good position so yeah it'll be interesting early on for Van Rogue how they adapt uh, Pat you might tell us a little bit about um, the, the couple of new additions there maybe some unfamiliar names uh, to, to some people tuning in Oshin Connolly um, do you know Shocknessy I, I have heard of and then Jose Poblaciones uh, I'm going to I'm going to guess yeah Jose, Jose is a, a player that, that Zabby's brought in from um, from Galway um, look he's, he's a good young player he's a striker um, so he's, he's flying and training so hopefully he'll be a good addition for us um, I suppose similarly Dino Shocknessy has been a great player underage for Ballon Robe um, he was on the court for a few years um, playing a bit of ball down there but he's thankfully for us now he's, he's back he's had a very good season and he's a good eye for goal as well so I suppose you know, that'd be a help, those two signs in particular, to the likes of J.P. O'Gorman, just to maybe take the load off of him in terms of um, goal scoring. Um, O'Sheen Connolly has been absolutely, uh, he's, he's an outstanding player. Um, he was brilliant at the weekend against Claire Morris. Um, I suppose, look, he's, he's a guy, that Joe, you mentioned previously, he's played underage for Ireland, um, former Sligo Rovers player as well, like he's coming with a great pedigree like so I think they're, they're three huge signings for, for Ballon Robe Absolutely uh, Stuart I'll just turn to you there for your thoughts on, on Ballon Robe Town before we move on Yeah I know Joe mentioned that uh, Ballon Robe might struggle if they have some uh, early challenges in, in the beginning of the season but I think what will stand to Ballon Robe over the last couple of years since they've come back it, whether it's the League 2 League 1 or the Premier League and Pat will know this 
they've had their own challenges as well. They've had games which are tight. They haven't necessarily blitzed their way through the division. They haven't beaten like teams five, six, seven nil. And when then you encounter a challenge, they don't know how to respond to it. You've seen teams come up from the Premier League when they've gone on great runs, encounter a setback in the Super League and they fall apart. Banner Robe, whether it has been in those divisions, they've come through tight games, one one nils, two ones, three twos, even that triple winning season, they had their challenges, they obviously went taken all the way to penalties by Manola B in the Premier Cup final as well. I think of the two teams that are have been promoted, I think Banner Robe are the best equipped for it. And uh, I think I think they'll finish mid table. Uh, strong stuff there, Stuart, and uh, definitely. And Pat make... has not paid me to say that. <laughs> Thank you for our confidence. Us, Joe. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> People are building us up now. <laughs> uh, moving on next to uh, Ballyhain, who finished in third place uh, last year, suffered six defeats, and they ended up 16 points off Celtic. They came into the season as champions. Um, Maybe a squad, a uh, little bit of transition going on there with a few of the B team players moving up to uh, to the A team. Uh, Joe, I'll go to you first there. Um, how can you see some of these B, B players, I suppose, from last season? How are they going to adapt to the Super League? How do you think they'll get on? Yeah, it's a big step up for them. Um, they they were playing League One football last year. And, like Ballyhean aren't a team that'll be at the bottom of the league. Like their their last three years, they've won it twice and came third once. So like is that even step up to the higher end of the Super League for the young lads so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they adapt to that um, I think Ballyhane have a very set 9 or 10 players as in like it's always going to be the likes of John Vahey Jack Tuffy Killian Redmond Jared Ludden Jack Rochford Michael Fahey um, Sean Kilcoyne Ben Adé Nathan Ryan Doyle you know all these lads are going to be starting for them and it's just we'd say fitting one or two in we'd say like Shane McTominay or um, Roy Morris Dylan Stevenson Roy Morris like Dylan Stevenson got a goal at the weekend so he was at the Mayon ratings last year the, the one thing about Ben Day's return to form now it's huge for Ballyhead I thought Ben Day last season was he was obviously carrying a knock he wasn't as best he's been outstanding in the Oscar trainer like every single game Ben Day has been added for Mayo so like I think that's huge for Ash Stevens and Joe Redmond to have his return to form um, I don't think Ballyhane get the respect they deserve um, like, they don't get talked about in the same um, sort of sentences as the Ballyhane and the Celtics and like as I said they're first first and third like that's three brilliant seasons yeah. for like for a rural team as well, like uh, you know, if you're a town and you have a huge um, pick of players coming through from Premier League underage, it's gigantic. Like so, um, the rural clubs it is that bit tougher. So it just shows the great work that's been done out there. I'm thinking they'll have a decent season again. Absolutely, I, I'm going to pick up on something that uh, Joe said there, Stuart, about Ballyhane not getting the respect I suppose that they deserve. Uh, you know, when the conversation comes around about title contenders and that sort of thing, you look at this team, you know. The, the spine there you're talking kind of Killian Redmond Sean Kilcoyne you know minus maybe Liam Irwin you're talking mm. about a team there th- the same team that won the Super League two years ago and a year before that as well um, you know all the ingredients are there w- it, what would stop them going it, on a title run this year? I, I don't see anything stopping they've gone completely under the radar uh, coming into this season there's been t- obviously talk about Celtic talk about Balna talk about Westport Ballyhane have gone under the radar uh, even last year, coming into last year as well, they, they were back-to-back champions, but nobody had really talked about them as doing a three in a row. Um, obviously, they're going to have more availability with Michael Fahey. I know he was away a lot last year uh, with uh, Gaelic, but uh, you look you look at that starting at Liverpool Valley Hayne, minus Liam Irwin, that's, they're still all there. Um, if they can find one or two players from that B team to step up who can you know, improve Valley Hayne's squad as well, they're going to be up there challenging. Absolutely. Uh, Pass your thoughts on, on yeah. Ballyhane coming into the yeah, season. I just think looking at the, the screen there, Benita got nine goals last season. I've seen a couple of the games lately with Mayo. He's going to score 18 or 19 this year. I think he, he's going to have a massive, massive season. I see him ripping this division apart, to be honest with you. Um, if he's banging all the amount of goals, Ballyhane are going to certainly get 10, 15 more points than they got last year, which is getting them into that discussion with Ballina and with Celtic but I think a lot rests on his shoulders and if he has a big season with the quality belly hand and you've listed them off that, that is a quality 11 if they can avoid injuries and Benita has a big big season which I think he will 
they're going to be very close. Absolutely, yes. I suppose injuries have have been something that have uh, played them a little bit in the last couple of years. I know Daryl Ludden missed quite a bit of football in, in the last year or two. Um, excellent left back. I think we had him both down as a, a player of the year. Mm, yeah. um, nominee. Nominee, definitely. Yeah. Um, a phenomenal player and there's quality great, all great over that team. Great set piece as well. And one thing I will add as well with Ben Eda, that what Ballyhin probably didn't have last year that the Celtic and Ballina do and probably Ketchman not do in Jack Connor is a guy who can score 15, 20 goals. If they if Ben Eda does up it or Nathan Riley Doyle ups his total, they're, they're very much up there. Absolutely, yes. And uh, one to watch we've put down there is uh, Dylan Stevenson, who I might add scored an absolute cracker of a free kick last year against Casabar Celtic. Now, they did lose that game. 4-2 but it was about the 88th minute and he just sent it flying into the top corner and two minutes later he nearly did the exact same thing with Stefan Hester was a bit wiser to that one but uh, excel- exciting times at Ballyhane I'm sure uh, we can't be, be so ruling the, them the, out The importance of Killian Redmond in that team can't be understated as well he's mm. an absolute Rolls Royce of a defender um, he's absolutely critical to him as well so Absolutely, yeah. Leadership on the field as well, or out the field as well, I suppose, uh, is what he provides. Uh, moving on then to last year's champions, Castle Bar Celtic, uh, unbeaten champions. We've talked about it already. 16 victories, uh, two draws, uh, not many blights on their record, I suppose, maybe just in the cup competitions. Uh, Stuart, I'll go to you first there. Uh, what dangers, if any, are there for Castle Bar Celtic? Like, what stands in their way of simply repeating last year's feat? Maybe themselves. Um, I unless they implode somehow, I can, I really struggle to see Celtic not retain title. They have the strongest squad without question. They have you know they have X factor players and likes of Jordan Loftus. Obviously, guys like Liam Flatley and Colin Coyne returning to boot to boost their squad. And when you look at some of the young players that they have, um, Mark Cunningham was a revelation last season uh, in that back four, along with Brian Walsh as well. And obviously, they still have you know, Issa Rice still there, Mark Howley, and goal De- Stephen Hester. And then you're looking at guys who were struggling to get in the team last year at times. Um, like Jason Hunt was, is talked about as one of the best you know, wingers in the league and he struggled to get a lot of game time last year, such was the, the threat of the likes of Dylan Edwards. Um, one thing that might catch Celtic early on, this might give hope to other teams, is they're not going to be chasing that Connacht Cup uh, to get that final, get that 10th Connacht Cup, especially in their centenary year. Obviously, they're in action this weekend against Carterton United. La Decima. Yeah, La Decima. And, um, you know... May, will that will they have one eye on that uh, possibly? But uh, if you think if they have a good if they continue like they did last season, I struggle to see anyone who's going to be able to stop them. Absolutely. Uh, in in the past, Casper uh, Celtic have they won the league in twenty eleven. They had to wait eight years for their next one. Twenty nineteen, they won it. Had to wait until last year. Um, Joe, can you see them having any such similar struggles this year, um, or are they much better equipped than they were in those past scenarios? I suppose. Um, yeah, I, th- I think uh, Stevie Gavin has them uh, well set up at the moment. Um, I think they're probably best set, we'd say, to do it again. Um, as you said there, they haven't done back-to-back um, Super Leagues and that. So maybe there is that sort of question mark in the minds whether they'll be able to uh, do it. But like, they had such a good season last year like, uh, to drop only two draws um, in the whole season. I just think their squad is so strong at the moment that, you know, when they probably won it before, they mightn't have had that strength and depth that, you know, everyone was chomping for positions and if one or two lads aren't at it at the moment, you know, they'll be easily replaced um, by squad players. Like, so the, I think I think the squad probably means that they, they are going to be hard stopped. Um, but I, th- I think Johnny Cocos is a huge loss. I think in the way they play with transitions and stuff, um, like he was so good at, get, uh, at his all action midfield performance so it'll be very interesting to see how they sort of adapt like I look back to when we played them in Celtic Park last year in the middle of Super League Johnny Cocosa was man of the match for them that day uh, and had a huge effect on the result being turned so yeah it'll be interesting to see how they kind of adapt to that um, I think Colin Evans going travelling as well could be a loss to them for experience around the middle but I still think if you look at Cahill Coyne coming back, um, Liam Flatley, like it's, um, they, they have so much quality. And I suppose when you're the county town team, like you do have that pick of players and 
and that so their squad will be strong but um, I think they'll be everyone's favourites to go again Absolutely uh, Pat you were speaking glowingly before we came on the air about uh, Jason Hunt um, a lot of these players from this Oscar trainer team um, come from Castlebar Celtic um, what are your thoughts on, on Celtic coming in, coming into the air? Yeah well look I think I've, I've said it on the pod before like um, I think Stevie Gavin he's built a team here it's one of the best junior sides in the country I firmly believe that they Probably should have won the Connacht Cup final against that in Rye last year. They were very unfortunate to go to the FAI Junior Cup. I think it was at the Pike Rovers. Yeah. Very unfortunate. I think we're looking at an absolutely outstanding junior side at the moment. That's evidenced by what they did last season. But I, I think they, you know, they would definitely be gunning for the Connacht Cup this season. Whether they can maintain the standards in the league to, to like to, to win 16 and draw two like that, it's nearly impossible to do that again. But. I, I don't know if they'll drop off enough for anyone else to catch them. Jason Hunt is, is a class act. Um, again, in the Kerry game there recently, like he's, he's just, he's just a, like one of those inverted wingers. He's balanced, he's dribbling, he's, he's a lovely player to, to watch play like. So, yeah, I mean, Jordan Loftus as well to come back into that side. You know, they have so much quality. Um, is, is there a question of the Oscar trainer going 12 months of the year? Like, it meant there wasn't that break for some of the Celtic lads. And it now looks like there'll be four or five of them in the inter provincial squads for the Connacht. Do you think could that affect? Uh, no, I don't think. St- I don't think Stevie Gavin is using that as an excuse. He doesn't. I don't think he finds well, no, it. Exactly. We're using as an them. excuse I mean, <laughs> for them. <laughs> in fairness, Joe, when you look when you look at all the, the the squads we consider probably title challengers, they all have four or five in that squad, don't they? Like I mean, Westport. And they're all primarily playing twelve months oh. of the year as well. These yeah. two sides who are playing at yeah. the top because. The competitions of the Connacht Cup are. I, I, I think it's going to be very interesting for all these players from the Oscar trainer coming back to their clubs, and like they must be absolutely brimming, brimming with confidence, um, and how that translates them coming back to their clubs. It's going to be very interesting. We got our first comment here. Uh, Tomas Keating says, "Well done, Paul O'Malley and Stuart Tynan. Uh, brilliant show so far. So hard luck." Uh, Joe and Pat you'll have to try a bit harder than that sorry Paul what, what was that just uh, Tomas Keating have you an haircut uh, you know I, might, I actually might uh, um, thanks Mark just one other question there on, on Casabar Celtic um, coming into the season now uh, Jordan Loftus who we spoke to uh, in our Oscar trainer preview episode um, he's still on the sidelines he's still injured obviously he was among their top scorers last year 12 goals um, um, how do they fill the gaps there? Who who steps into that number nine position uh, coming into the season, do we reckon? I think you have Luke Kelly there. I think he's come on leaps and bounds the last 18 months. Liam Flatley is capable of doing that. Uh, so is Jason Hunt. I mean, this is probably testament to how Celtic have been transformed the last eight, 18 to 24 months. When if a, well, Two years ago, if a player like Jordan Loftus was out of the team, you could put your money on Celtic probably losing that game because... They would just the firepower wasn't there, like last year. I think I know Jordan Loftus actually missed a fair chunk of the early start of the season, and the biggest compliment you can pay to that Celtic team is his the, his injuries, his absence wasn't felt. I mean, you had guys come step stepping in and like guys like Johnny Cocos, like guys like Dylan Edwards, guys like Luke Kelly, who came in and was firing the goals, and uh, they've still got they've got those players there. Obviously, minus Cocosa, so. You know, I think Celtic will cope, but when he comes back then as well, they have the X factor Loftus, and he and that makes Celtic an even more dangerous prospect. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we'll we'll move on from the champions then to uh, another promoted team, another set of champions in their own rights. Claire Morris, who won the Premier League last year, pipping Ballinrobe to the title. Uh, I think they a good few points between you and Claire Morris in the end. They seem to have a very good season, from what I remember, but. That's off the top of my head now. Yeah, I think it was, was it five points in the end. I think we brought it to the last day, but we, we drew with KK and they beat, they beat Belly Hornets. Um, yeah, they're a very good side. They're really, really good in possession. Um, really, really good football team, I suppose. Last season, Danny Broderick, Rox McCocus, um, you know, really, really good footballers. Uh, James Morley, absolutely outstanding player. Um, I was chatting to him Sunday after the game and I just said, Look, did you ever not have a good game like anything I've seen in his, his different class? Like, and, you'd like to Calvin Joyce and Don Mellor at the back they're, they're very solid I think it was Keith Saunders and goals as well um, mm. very solid keeper so no I, I had a good look at them on Sunday they're, they're in decent shape they're in decent shape I think they'll, they'll do okay Absolutely yes um, double winners I think last year they, they won their divisional cup as well um, Clamaris 
bit we were I think we were kind of down on them a bit in the last couple of weeks because it took them a while to get the management situation sorted out very close to the start of the season but what manager Kevin Lally does have uh, coming in now is, is a very solid base I mean Pat you've seen them there on, on Sunday against Ballon Robe in the Cup and I mean you, you look at players like Simon Butler Calvin Joyce Mark Maloney Joe how would you size up Clamaris uh, coming into this season? Yeah they have a very talented group of players um, I think there's a bit of softness we'd say in the way they kind of look at the Super League at times I think they were they were worried about um it said the management was slow getting set up. Like you, there's always question marks over whether one or two players are fully committing for the season, and that doesn't really go on in a lot of clubs. I think Clamars just have that kind of aura about them that they, I don't think they achieve what they should uh, go through their team. The Andrew Peters, Calvin Joyce, No at the back. Like that's that's a strong sort of core there. Like Jason Murphy and James Morley, the Bradys. Do you know Mark Maloney is now back, so the, there's so much quality in Clare Art, but I just think at times they just don't do themselves justice. Um, and that, and I thought maybe we'd say the confidence of winning the double last year might have just given them that bit of an impetus going into the season, but they were just a bit slow getting going, so it'll be interesting. Um, be interesting to see how they get on. They have a lot of talent, and they're, they have a good sort of age profile, they have a lot of pace. They'll cause trouble for teams. They've ground out that result against Ballon Rove at the weekend, and that which will give them confidence going into some of the bigger games. Uh, it'll be interesting. They have Manola uh, this weekend. Um, massive game. So, like, that's a massive game early on for them, the, the Simon Collins Derby. I and, want to, I was uh, going to say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like Simon Collins moved from Manola to Clermont so only a few weeks ago. So, like, that's that'll add a bit to the game as well. So, that could be a spicy out, out of fair the first day out, but. Um, yeah, I think Claire Morris, I think, as Stuart said earlier, that he thinks Ballon Rove will finish above Claire Morris. I think maybe Claire Morris might finish above Ballon Rove, but I think they both might have enough to stay up in the Super League. But, Ooh, uh, differing opinions on this podcast. <laughs> We've been getting on very well lately, yeah, lads. It's yeah, about so time. No, I, I just think Claire Morris have a lot of quality. And Mark Maloney, there's someone that can win a lot of games up top. I, I think Mark Maloney's the one. I just think he causes so... The, the fingers are nervous when he's around. He is so bloody quick. Like, uh, he's lightning. Um, I was very surprised when he left Claire Morris last year to go to KK. I suppose, look, he wanted to stay in the, the Super League. But I think it's absolutely massive for Claire Morris to get him back. He is absolute quality. And he is going to score goals from... So he, I think he gives him a really good chance, actually, of, uh, of possibly creeping towards the Roman table. Absolutely. Uh, Stuart, you, you mentioned earlier when we were talking about Ballon Rope Town that they seemed better equipped to stay up uh, than Clamaris. Uh, what are Clamaris lacking, do you think, um, in, in terms of um, you know, s- I think survival ability? Something that Joe brought up, I think, is a good point, is that maybe a soft centre at times with Clamaris. Um, and you, it's evidence here. Um, 2021, they finished third. The following year, they got relegated. I mean, I remember we were thinking after that 21, 21 season, we are thinking, right, Clamars are finally going to make that big jump. And they had a nightmare. They were they, talking about it. They yeah, were yeah, very they were, confident. Yeah, they, they, were, they were confident. And they, sh- they, sh- they had every right to be confident. And they should have been confident after the season they had. Then in 2022, it was an absolute nightmare. I remember seeing them very early doors, maybe the second or third game of the season against Celtic. And I even went right there and they're going to get relegated. I mean, there was just such a soft centre with them. And I feel with Clamar sometimes there's no middle ground. They'll either do really well this season or they're going to get relegated. And I feel if they, like this game against Manola, e- even if it's the first game of the season, it feels like a six-point already. I feel if Clamar uh, get off to a bad start, they could struggle. Um, and uh, look, I know we'll get to predictions later, but I, do, I still do feel Ballon Rope will have a better season than Clamaris because I think Ballon Rope have that steel you know, if things are going wrong, that they will dig in. I think sometimes with Clamars, and we have seen it evidence, maybe not last year in the Premier League, but in the season before that in the Super League, where if it's if has, if it's going against them, the heads can drop. And, I've, and, you know, my fear is, you know, history could repeat itself. Yeah, I, I think that's 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 very good point, Stuart. Like, and we all know Clamars have great, mm. great players. They always have had good footballers. But when things are going well, everything is great. Mm. When things aren't going well, mm, I wonder, you know... So, yeah, like I, I know in the game on Sunday, we, we got at him, we got him behind him quite a lot, we created an awful lot of chances. And I think that could be the issue from going defensively as opposed to going forward. Like, a lot of teams could cause him problems. Do, do you think Clamaras have underachieved, considering they're a town club overall? Yeah, they're in the Premier League, at, uh, we'd say it's only ages underage, but 
they just seem to have that kind of just I, I don't know what it is about them but they just they just never kind of achieve what they should have seen here like their record you mentioned the softness is that part yeah. of it yeah, yeah I, I think it is to be honest but uh yeah, the, I don't want to. I don't want to give them too much energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Can, can I just say one thing now? Uh, our sponsor, the ranch, are from Clermont. You know, you know, I don't want to upset them too much. And I also need to apologise. I was so disappointed with the defeat so I didn't call in for a pint in the way. I was ah, no, Pat. But, but I got a lovely cup of coffee and a purple snack, free in Clermont. You've been so going on about that for the last three days. days. No. <laughs> it was a very nice snack. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, Claire Morris. Um, yeah, Andy Peters back as well, of course. Uh, excellent addition to the, the squad. I think he was a stats man there at Leicester City for a while. Um, and Galway United as well at one point. He played for them um, not too long ago. No, I think he was playing as a number 10 last time, kind of there around the middle. Um, very good footballer uh, as well. We're going to take a little break here for about five minutes, but just before we do, we have one or two listeners' questions here. Um, a couple of comments as well. Thomas Lawrence says that Pat didn't break the news. He's becoming the Ireland manager. <laughs> Get it out in his FAI jacket here. Thomas, will you be careful now? I told you not to tell anyone. The, the joys are going live. You, you're no, not going to be my no, number two now. Be picked up on. <laughs> yeah, we, we did discuss that on Facebook a week or so ago, actually. We have a, a question for Pat as well from uh, Pat McTighe. He says, Great show, lads. Ask Patrick O'Sullivan if he'd prefer Liverpool to win the quadruple or Ballinrobe Town to win the oh. Super League. Ballinrobe Town all day, every day. Ah, it's, Pat. It's, it's uh, more okay. likely to. Good, good, good <laughs> answer. Easy, easy to watch. Yeah, watch it now. Good answer. We have a question as well from uh, Patrick Armstrong. Well, lads, just before you get on to Con, realistically, how far away are they from winning a Super League and what Super League player would you add to the Con squad to get them over the line? Uh, will we take this when we talk about Con Rangers in a couple of minutes, lads? That might yeah. be the best way to, to go about it, right? We're going to take a quick break for maybe five minutes just to clear our heads, and uh, we'll be right back with you then after that.
You are very welcome back to the Mayo Soccer Podcast live show here from uh, from Umbro Park, Mile Bush. Uh, great show we're having so far, lads. Getting a couple of lovely comments and very, very good feedback. Uh, keep the questions coming in. We will endeavour to answer as much of them as possible. Uh, speaking of questions, we've got a very good one there about Con Rangers that we might incorporate into the discussion of the next team, which is Con Rangers. Uh, finished in sixth place last season. Uh, a lot of the hard work done in the first half of the season, it must be said. Lost seven of their last nine games. Um, I suppose the question I'll put uh, to you first, Joe. You meet the man in the knowledge uh, about them. Um, have Con got better or are they much the same coming into this season? Um, of course, you'd probably say we've definitely uh, got better. We'd have learned a lot from last season. Um, you know, there was a lot of, I think our average age, a lot of time last season was 21, 22. Like, so for young lads to kind of get to play at that level for the year, playing against the best teams around, I think they've definitely learned a lot you know there's a lot of hunger probably in our squad to compete higher than we did last season um yeah i i, I think we've definitely improved we've strengthened the squad as well i think and um, the word i've kind of used uh throughout the se- uh, throughout and um, the preseason for us was it was just such a kind of um long season last year like 18 games at that level and you actually added every single week in the super league it was just it was <laughs> it was so tough um and I think as a management team we've learned a lot from as well so yeah I really look forward to this season um, I think we've uh, we've competed well in all our games over the pre-season but um, yeah we're just really looking forward to the Ballyhean game this week and just get, getting it kicked off now I suppose you're doing all the hard running and hard training and stuff and you're kind of waiting for the the games to come along so it's, it's nice to be able to look forward to them now Absolutely yes uh, Stuart your thoughts on, on Con Rangers did you have them picked to go down no that was me I had them, I had them to go down last season I think I think you, you kept them safe um, yeah, yeah. your thoughts on Con Rangers anyway No I thought Con would be fine last year and they, they had a solid season when they came up and I expect them to get stronger now I mean, look at even looking at the game against Athenry who are the Connor Cup champions Con Rangers competed for long periods. I mean, I think in the end just a bit of extra quality that Athenry had uh, done Con in the end, but you know Con put in a very good performance, and I expect them to be even stronger again this year. Like, I mean, look at some of the signs they made. Keen McHale from Straight and Foxford. Uh, Dave McHale looks Sorry, so. Where did he come from? Uh, Straight and Foxford United. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mikey Lothar, Shane Farrell, Owen Prendergast, and uh, Dave McHale as well. Obviously, two-time Oakler Cup winner as well. I mean, what Con are now doing is they're not just improving their eleven; they're strengthening their squad. And as lads have said over the last since on this podcast, to be in the Super League, to be consistent in the Super League, and be t- to be competitive, you need a squad as well as your best 11 and you need them every week um, Con have been going strength to strength the last couple of years and I expect Con to be not mid-table but possibly pushing higher as well uh, Pat we, d- we got asked uh, what Super League player would you add to Con to get them over the line what Con player would you add to the Ballon Robe Town Squad and why is it Cullum Rutledge oh, <laughs> it would definitely be Cullum Rutledge his class um, yeah, um, I think just looking at Con for the season ahead, I know like they've brought in the, the McHales and a few others on um, Prendergast, but I suppose the guys I'm most excited to see this season are Adam Gallagher and Colin Rutledge. They're young lads. They've kind of grown up with that team. They, they both had great seasons last year. I think, they, I think Colin Rutledge possibly is going to rip up this division this year as well. He's a really, really good player. So, um, no, I think it's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, they had a young squad that had kind of come up together. You said you've got that year in the Super League last year. You've added a bit more depth to the squad. I really think he, that Con have a very, very... If one of the top four slip up and don't get in there, I think Con could make be a top four this season. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah, that's... I, I had it as that in the paper as well. I think if any of that top four kind of... Yeah, you I, didn't, know. I didn't read the paper, I didn't realise that, I wasn't copying you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if any of them are to, to falter in any way at all or pick up a few poor results, I think Con will, will swoop in there uh, and, and effectively take their place on the table. Joe, what Super League player would you add to the Con squad to get them over the line to finally address the question? <laughs> they might do the Bayern Munich and try and take someone off the big rivals. So I, I don't know, uh, you might... Um, there's an awful lot of quality. You take anyone off the Oscar Fenner, to be honest, like in any position, it just adds to the squad. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't really... That's a, you have to, you have to give an answer. Answer the answer. question, Joe. <laughs> answer the question. <laughs> I would take... 
maybe I suppose Ben Day is having a brilliant run at the moment. He, he strikes me as someone that uh, would be a good addition. <laughs> you'd take him, though. You wouldn't ask if he's available like, or anything <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. You just, yeah, okay. That's how that's how you get your dealings done. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's Con Rangers uh, looked at. Uh, next up then is Cross Malina, uh, eighth place in the table last season. Um, conceded 69 goals last year. Three of their six wins were against teams uh, who were relegated. Um, I suppose the question I'd have about Cross Malina and their chances of survival is obviously not to be too down about them, but Stuart, is the only way they can stay up in the league this year is it by virtue of another team effectively doing a Clamars from two years ago and just having a very bad start and not being able to get things uh, back up and running again? Uh, in a word, yeah. I would very, I would be very worried about Cross Malina this year. I was very worried about Cross Malina even towards the end of last season. I mean, I thought I could, she won midway. They had a great, they had a great start to the league. I think they won three of their opening six games, mm. and then they just fell off a cliff. I mean, they got some absolute hammerings as well along the way. I think they got, you mentioned thirteen nil to, uh, to Ballina Town, and um, you know, I think if Glen Hest had were able to hold on to some of their leads last season, we would be talking about cross mind being the Premier League this year as opposed to Glen Hest. Um, and I don't think they've been helped by the fact that they haven't got Niall Coggins or Jeremy Coggins this year, two men who were integral in terms of uh, goal scorers. Now, they've still got good players there, the likes of Stuart Griffin, Ian Gordon, Vlad Goretzky, and obviously their captain, Kevin Campbell, a very good player. But um, I think McDuffie has a, has a huge challenge on his hands if he's to keep cross line in the Super League again this for next year. I suppose just you know, speaking of cross they went up as uh, double champion, yeah. champions they the Cup. Mm-hmm. They were used to winning and winning, winning well in the Premier yeah. League. Something they went up, yeah, they got their few wins, but then reality hit. I, I think they're possibly a squad that maybe they just didn't deal well with adversity when it came. And they were lucky enough to survive towards the end of last season, whereas Con Rangers probably had to battle a lot harder in the Premier League. When you got up there, you were more ready for, yeah, I mean, for, they, for that fight. And, Con finished seventh the year before yeah. they went up, you know. That's yeah, something I mentioned with Ballon Road, that when you were coming up, you were had to battle many of your games as well across blitzed their way through the Premier League almost and when they did meet that first stumbling block you know it was a struggle and for them it, it's just interesting how squads adapt like and you know when you're hitting your, you can be hit bloody hard in the Super League and mm. you can be hit a lot and it's how you recover where's the next point coming from and definitely I, I do think they're going to be in that mix down there in the bottom three or four I think it's definitely the biggest uh, challenge of Mick Duffy's career is that like the mm. management um, it's completely different when you're into my villa they're in the prime division like, this is a real challenge and I suppose cross minus squad now with the two Coggins is um, unavailable like this there's serious lack of quality going forward you take nine Coggins and your uh, goals out of their um, their goals scored last season like uh, they wouldn't have an awful lot of goals coming elsewhere which will be a huge challenge for them and I think this is going to be the biggest challenge for their whole squad together. So it could make or break them as a club. Um, to be honest, they could they could really struggle this season. But the one thing about them is that they have so much fighting spur. The Stuart Griffin, Ian Gordon, mm-hmm. Kevin Campbell. But when you're in the Super League, you know teams can hit you from all over the place. And I I think cross mine now this year will, will I think it's going to be a big struggle for them, and they they could really do with having a half decent start. And they need uh, and they need other lads to step up as well. Yeah, big time, and, and like I just don't know how the young lads that have came in that just are going to contribute uh, with goals and that I, I just think it's going to be a real, real tough, they're, they're going to have to maybe do what Glenn Hess done a few times and try and, you know, really dog out games and make a 1-0 here and there, that, that, that could... I don't see them. I, I don't see Cross Mina doing that though. Like even the last year or so, that they were never really that defensive. Team. Oh, they like to play a bit of football, yeah. you know. They, they, and I think even with the chips that down, can, that can come back to bite you as well. I, I think yeah. We played them in friendlies over the years. Um, they're a very expansive team. They like to play open attack in football, mm. and that's fine when you're playing you know lesser opposition in the lower leagues. But in the Super League, you know you can be found out. Like and I think that's probably what happened to them in the second half of last season. Uh, but in saying that. I think there's three or four clubs that are going to be in that that area, and those matches they're all going to be six pointers. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, you know the, when Ballon Road play Cross Mallow, for example, they're, they're huge games. Like, um, and whoever wins the most of those matches will probably, you know, they're going to, they're going to stay up. 
for sure. Uh, so quite possibly long season ahead uh, for Cross Malina. We'll be keeping a very close eye on them throughout the season. Uh, next up then, it's Kilshma Knock United. Fifth place last year. Um, I think it's worth making a comparison between their uh, their season in 2022 and 2023. Um, double the number of defeats from one season to the other. Went from four defeats to eight. Eight less goals scored. Um, are they in for better or worse or perhaps similar this year, Joe? Yeah, I think they'll, I'd probably look at them and say may, maybe mid-table again. Um, I think they're better than uh, the teams at the bottom, but I just don't think they have... Um, the quality in midfield to probably challenge at the top. Uh, they've lost um, Connor Byrne and James McGrath, who were two of the best centre mids in the in the Super League. So it'd be awful hard for any team to adapt to to losing that quality. Um, and they, they relied an awful lot on Connor Byrne's deliveries too from set pieces. They're really good at attacking set pieces. James Costello puts a lot of work into that. They have with Lorcan Conroy now signed. They have four Oscar Trainer squad members, so they have they have quality. Uh, within their team but I just think in midfield against the top teams they'll, they'll struggle um, and that that was a very bad result for them at the beginning of the Connacht Shield um, but when you have Jack O'Connor up front and you create chances for him they'll definitely win games along the way and they'll be awkward to play against because Paul Byrne and James, Gra- or James Costello are really good coaches so they'll um, they'll have an awful lot of work done behind the scenes and they'll, they'll give teams trouble but I don't think consistent wise they'll be in the top four Absolutely Pat your thoughts on Kilshman Ock United Yeah I, I'm inclined to agree with that I think they'll probably finish fifth or sixth um, I, I think Joe you summed up very well there Jack O'Connor is going to win them a lot of football matches um, so I don't see them being anywhere near the relegation side of things but I just think I suppose they've lost a couple of players over the last year or so I, I don't think they have enough quality to, to break the top four anyway this year, that'll be my opinion on it. But look, James Costello is a great coach, like and he'll have those guys ready. Lorcan Conroy is a very interesting signing for them. Um but yeah, I think fifth or sixth I think would be my, my prediction for them for this year. Stuart, where do you see Kilchman United finishing this year? Yeah. You had them go down there, I remember, a few years ago and they did and you they, weren't a popular I, man in that part of the world. No, and I still ain't. <laughs> <laughs> um they had a brilliant year when they came up. I mean Maybe they did. I think they did a lot better probably than they were expecting. I mean, I think I know I was talking to Ronan Malee at the league launch, and they said they probably were maybe a year ahead of where they expected to be. I mean, left yeah that year when they came up, they were brilliant. I mean, they were very unlucky to run into. Uh, they they played uh, one of the best Super Cup finals we've ever seen against Celtic in in, in Mile Bush. I think uh, last twelve year, eleven on penalties. I think yeah, I think mad one, like that. Yeah, I think the light. I think if it went any longer, I think they might have to call the final off because the lights are, the, there was no lights working. But uh, look, I think last year maybe with more of a reality check in terms of where they really are. Obviously, losing Connor Byrne, losing James McGrath was a real was a real blow. But they still got very good players there. Obviously, Killian Finn, Ronan Malik, Cormac Caulfield. Uh, obviously, they brought in Jamal Kez and Andy Cunyan uh, last year. And they still have Jack O'Connor. I mean, was it two years ago he was Footballer of the Year? I mean, you know, if he has a, a, a similar season like that and the likes of Conan st- step up, you know, yeah, they could they could maybe push for higher than uh, mid-table, but I think they're going to be in around that area if come, in, come the end of the season. Yeah, I, personally, I'd see Kilchmanock United maybe in a, a similar enough position to Con Rangers in that if someone above them is going to slip up, they could sneak in and maybe finish third or fourth, but... Obviously, that's contingent on results for other teams. Uh, We'll move on then to Manola, seventh place last season. They've been on a bit of a descent the last couple of years. We can see there on the screen, fifth, sixth, seventh. uh, And what will follow this year, um, we can only imagine. um, I mean, you know, I, I think last year they were better than the likes of Straden Fox or Glenn Hest, obviously. But the question coming into this year is, are they better than the teams who are going to be around them? You're talking maybe Cross Malina, Ballon Road, Clamars. Are they better than this team, th- those teams this year? I suppose that's the question that the next few weeks might be able to answer. But I, I think they've had a bad few weeks. Um, like they took the 7 0 thumping off Westport um, at the weekend of the Connacht Shield, which was a really bad result. Um, they lost Rock and Conroy to Knockhill Shema. They've lost. Simon Collins or Coach Termar, so there's a real sort of 
adversity around them at the moment that um, it'll be very interesting to see how they react. Um, they've, they've lost quality in their squad and, it, and just looking at their teams over the last few weeks, a like, few lads were key to them last year and the Bensons and players like that haven't been available so it's um, it'll be very interesting to see how they kind of react to this now. I, I think there's going to be an awful burden on Aidan Dunleavy for goals um, but the one thing about Manola is when their backs against the wall, they they've often came out fighting, and I'd imagine they'll play very defensive and they'll look to hit on the counter with Donnelly's pace. But um, I just think you're putting a lot of pressure on him, and uh, we'd say last year I think he got four Super League goals, so he'd probably need to get closer to twelve or thirteen for Manola to uh possibly get out of this fight because I think this is probably I think I I tipped them to go down last year and. They had a brilliant mid-season uh, where they picked up points against the Glen Hess and uh, a few teams like that. But uh, I think worth a- noting though that for you know they went on an excellent run of games when Lorcan Conroy came back for yeah, that's, the that's, last four games. They won three of them. That's that's another. It's not there no more. It, like, so yeah. It's, um, no, it'll be very interesting. I think it's a big challenge for Aidan Levy no more than the McDuffie challenge we just talked about beforehand. There'll be a lot of work that'll have to go in for them to. Compete. They played Clare Morris in a friendly about three weeks ago and Clare Morris bet them 4-1 and they actually got them then in the first round of the Super League fixture so that game straight away as Pat alluded to when we were talking about Clare Morris it feels like such a six-pointer early on do you know um, will Clare Morris turn them over if Manola go up there you know a week is a long time as board could we be turning around next week and saying you know Manola went away to Clare Morris and won and things are a lot better now in their camp but I just think going into the season there's an awful lot of negativity around, around it and they're going to be under huge pressure from the start. Not helped, I suppose, by a big defeat in the, the Shield at the weekend against Westport United today. Obviously, Westport, an excellent team, but, Pat, we were chatting about this and we felt that that was more indicative of where Manola are at as opposed to Westport. Well, look, if, if things aren't right, Westport will do it. You know, Westport can rip teams apart if, if you're not at it. Like, and there's, enough, there's more questions and answers now about Manola, to be honest, than... Look, they're, they're a massive club, but um, I suppose there's been an awful lot going on the last few weeks that, that you know, the noises aren't good. Um, this game against Clare Morris at the weekend is absolutely massive. If they were to lose that game, I think they could be in bother. I think they could be bother. I think they need, they need a good result on, on Sunday. I just, I don't know, I, I think the Bensons are, are very good players. I don't see them being available, which I wonder why, you know, they're two good lads. Um, Shea Vincent particularly was very good for their B team a couple of years ago. We played them a few times. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I'm struggling, to be honest with you, to, to see what's going on there at the minute. It, it doesn't look great. Sure, thoughts on Manola? I mean, in particular, the last couple of seasons, we've kind of seen them go from maybe five years ago being there or thereabouts in a position that a club like the Ballyhane would be in at the moment. Um, to where they are at now, it's been a rough couple of years for them, I would say. Absolutely, um, and they are definitely going to be in a battle at the bottom. But uh, one thing I think may attest to them, and something Joe brought up, Joe brought up, um, they they will battle. I mean, they're dogged, they're determined, and there was a few times last year, even against some of the top teams, Manolo did make things very difficult for t- teams. Uh, for the opposition and I think that will stick to them um, I can't see them you know obviously that uh, game against Westport United uh, in the Connor Shield that was a, you know that was a disaster for Manola um, but we but Westport can do that as well uh, I would agree with Pat as well that um, I think the game is much bigger for Manola than Claire Morris maybe at this stage because obviously the last few weeks from the sounds of things I think on the surface of things it hasn't been good at all and you know it could, and you know in the Super League, there's no mercy. It's unforgiving. It you know it could wrap very quickly, but I man, there's a there is a spirit about Manola. They still have very good players. There are guys like Rory Henry. I think he's a very very he's a top centre half. Obviously, guys like Lee Lyons. I know they brought in Josh Webb, Ty McGinty. Um, I know there will be some obviously some reliance on Indo Levy coming coming back to the club, but uh, I think if he does find form, I think Manola may just have enough about them to survive. Given that if things get st- and they and they know as well they're in for a tough season, I, so I think that might galvanise them as well. But um, yeah, it is. There is. It's, it's going to be a tough year ahead for them. 
for sure will move on now to the last team in the division Jeez, I think this podcast has absolutely flown by lads uh, we're looking next at Westport United uh, divisional cup winners last year off the top of my head am I right about that yeah um, fourth place in the division you know couple of that's kind of been where they've been at the last couple of years uh, haven't won a Super League now I think 2017 would have been their last one end of the four of the row yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously a long time now in the wilderness for a club like Westport to have not won a league title having been so successful uh, in the past um, do you think that you know there's obviously a heavy Westport involvement in this Oscar trainer team this year Pat is that going to benefit them playing at that sort of a, that sort of a level training against you know the players of a similar level from the Super League I guess uh, look, it's going to do no harm. Look, they've 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 an awful lot of quality. Um, obviously Darren Brown and and Killian White and Killian Midlay and all these guys like so, Kevin Kedrick etc. Like Dylan O'Malley, like it's the list. You just their names roll off the tongue like so. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I they're definitely in. The, they're definitely going to be in the top four. I think um, whether they can make a title. Ch- I, I'm not sure if they can bridge the gap to Celtic, and Ballina, but. They're a quality, quality up. They're very, very good players, as we said. Um, but um, for me, I think probably third or fourth, I think they'll finish this year. I suppose the challenge for Westport in the last couple of years is I, I must have had the same conversation with the club captain, Gary Cunningham, with a few different league launch nights where he talked about being in transition a lot. Um, are they still maybe a year or two off where they need to be with some of these younger players, Joe? Yeah, I think they probably are. They're, they have a very strong group between 2004s, 2005s, 2006s, which is, you know, brings up to 19. Like, the, like as Pat mentioned, they like to add a new gym to Killian White, you know, these lads. Um, Harrison Quinn has got a lot of minutes with, uh, with the Oscar trainer. Kevin Ketrick is still in leaving search. Do you know, if you're know, is still in leaving search, uh, these lads are playing week in, week out for Westport for the last year, which... You know, Kevin McMahon has given them opportunities. I think they done well against Ballina and Celtic in the Super League games last year. I think they lost to Celtic by goal twice, you know, so they they competed very well with them. Um they bet Ballina at home, they lost to a ninety fourth minute winner in Ballina, you know, so they they did show they can compete, they were just coming out the wrong side of uh some of those results, you know, but they were well in those games. Um so I I think that'll probably stand to them, but I just think they, they possibly don't have um, a killer instinct uh, in the final third as much as the other teams. They don't have like a Benny that's going to get 26 goals um, or Jordan Loftus that you know the whole league would look at and say, Joe you know, is such a dangerous striker or that. You know, I think that just holds them back a bit. We'd say Darren Brown does a lot of work for the team, but he wouldn't be a 20 goal striker because he plays deeper. They, they need him around the middle of the field for experience and that. Which is maybe if they they had him further forward, it might be a bit more of a threat for them. It might actually help them more to get to get more goals. I don't know. Um, but I just look at them and think, yeah, you're probably talking third or fourth. Um, for the season, but they are the they are a coming team and showed in the twenty one this season that them and Celtic, uh, you know, they won the cup. Celtic won the league. Celtic only bet them on penalties here for the league. So Westward are definitely. A common team, whether it's a year or two too soon, I don't know. But I, I think throughout this decade, we'll be talking about this Westport team. They'll win a lot of trophies. I think that Declan Pierce said in the paper uh, there four or five years off of where Celtic are at the moment. I think he was in jest that at, at, at that, like I mean, they're not that far away. They, they are coming, like, and they are going to win Super Leagues that squad. But I don't think they're ready yet. Like I mean, look, Kevin Kedrick got ten goals last season. Phenomenal for a young player, like, but. Who's getting the 15, 20 goals? Like, I mean, Adam Nugent being out injured as well, I think, is a massive blow from a centre forward. Darren Brown might actually end up playing centre forward for the first few rounds of the league. And if he, if he was to get in a run of banging in a few goals, maybe he'd be the answer in that position to get those 15 to 20 goals. That, I think you need that in a centre forward. Is that where he'll play for, for Ballon Road, Pat? <laughs> he'll play wherever he wants. <laughs> 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 Like Darren Brown, as Pat said, he's like such a focal point. Um, I'm surprised that they don't play him at nine more because I think he would be a man that would get a lot of big goals for them and he calls centre backs off trouble, but they tend to play him out the field. So and he's got he scored three goals for the 
the Oscar way. trainer from the 10 position. With so the Oscar has. trainer, like he's absolutely brilliant in the 10. Like yeah. He's integral to that team. He's quality. Mm. But the options they have at 9, you know, they can afford to play him as a 10. I just, I think Westbrook should be playing him as a 9, to be honest. Who's that lad from the B team you're always on about, Pat? On Ted Horn, quality. <laughs> 18 Premier League goals last season. Three or four against Ballon Rose. He always scores goals. He is absolute quality. He's a guy, I think, if he got a run in that team, maybe with Darren Brown behind him, I think he'll score, he'd score Super League goals for fun as well, if given the opportunity. Good stuff. Stuart, your thoughts on uh, Westport United coming into this season? Yeah, I, I would agree with the lads that I think in terms of a Super League title, I think they might be a year or two off it just yet. But I don't. I think they might be the closest challengers to Celtic even possibly. Even look at last year, they had a bit of a slow start. I think they had three or four defeats early doors. Obviously, Kevin McNamara had just come in as manager. But from around early June onwards, outside of Celtic, they were the informed team in the Super League. Um, they went on a blistering run and scoring goals for fun obviously they had a great win over K- Kilchmanock in the Westerro Cup final Adam Newton got a late winner I think the winning run was only ended by Ballinat Town in the the, the the Cup final in the end and you've got to look at the young the, the young players coming through that is probably one of the most exciting young uh, group of young players to come through that club in a long time probably since the early 2000s I mean guys like Killian White Harrison Quinn Noah Massey Fiona Hora Adam Newton Dylan O'Malley these are guys, some of these guys have won national titles with Rice College. They've won, uh, obviously a few of these guys won the League and Cup double at under 18 level last year. First Quigley Cup since 2000. The under 21 Cup as well was a huge, was huge for them. I think the only team to beat Celtic that year. I think you were at that game. You mentioned it was an unbelievable game. It was obviously, 35 degrees. <laughs> that was your main take for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And um, obviously I was at the under 21 League playoff final. Obviously the Westport lads were absolutely devastated to lose that. But uh, look, I think you know there's there's much better days ahead for the for those lads, and they've still got plenty of experience there as well. Guys like Kelly McLeay, Gary Cunningham, Mark Mandona. Obviously, they mentioned uh, they mentioned Darren Brown as well. I think with Adam Newton injured, they may be playing him in more of a centre four role, maybe in the opening weeks of the season. I think if Westbrook get off to a good start, if they continue that momentum. I think they're going to be very very close this year. I don't think it's. I think a Super League maybe not a bit too far away just yet. But uh, I would agree with the lads. I think there's a Super League title in this team. Well, I think, you know, Celtic, if they do were to go on and win again this year, I think they may enjoy these few years of success because Westport are coming. Mm. And it's only a matter of time before uh, they break the door down. Absolutely. So that brings us to the end of our look at all 10 teams uh, in the Super League. Before we get to our predictions, um, I'll just go through a couple of listeners' questions here. Sean Ruan. Uh, is has, oh, has my, written my in. Hi, yeah, he says uh, Super League is really strong again this year. But my question for Pat is: Can any of them do it on a wet and windy Tuesday night in Drum? <laughs> well, Sean, I'm not going to lie. I hope we see that next season um, and Kilmore get promoted and um, hopefully Ballon will be coming to see you. <laughs> Long old spin. And just for the record, Sean, we've never lost in Kilmore, <laughs> so, so we can do it. <laughs> Take that to the bank. A question, another, another uh, I suppose, Ballon Robe related question here from Thomas Lawrence is Do you think Sean Shocknessy was unlucky to not make the Oscar trainer squad? Obviously, Sean Shocknessy, goalkeeper for Ballon Robe Town, um, highly rated, yeah. I would say. I'm, I'm going to plead the fifth. <laughs> um, I suppose it's a position in the county that there's so much quality in. Yeah. You know, you can go through the top five or six teams. Their keepers, you know, the, like the like Emma Payton played in England mm. in the championship, and he's not on the Oscar trainer either. Do you know? So it's um, yeah, I suppose it'll always be players unlucky not to make it, but it's just you know, there's just such quality in that, and it'll be interesting to see him in the Super League now. Do you know? Not he mightn't be a a household name uh, to a lot of the top teams, so it'll be very interesting to see will he be talked about after this season as highly as he has been coming up to well, the divisions. I I I think like you know. Fair, maybe I, I think he probably was very unlucky, but I mean you can't question Joe Kelly when he's done to his squad. So fair play to Joe, and he's done a fantastic job. So that's all I'll say on the matter. <laughs> Good stuff. A um, couple of predictions coming in in the comments as well. If you have your predictions, uh, those of you watching. Uh, there's over a hundred hundred of you watching now at the moment. Uh, be sure to send them in. We'll do our best to get through a few of them. Jesper Frisch. Uh, Fahi Rovers, Jesper Frisch, we should say at this point, his predictions for the top three uh, in the Super League. He has Con Rangers in third, Casabar Celtic in second. I'll give you 
One guess. Oh, Westport United. Westport United, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's his, his top three predictions. But we'll get to our predictions now. Um, we're going to go around the table, first of all, um, with, our, uh, with our winners for the, uh, for the Super League. Um, I'll start, I suppose, with this one. And we can, we can each start a, a category each. So for winners, I think I might be booking the trend here. And I'm going to say Balana Town. Uh, I think they're long enough knocking on the door now and I think they'll have the bit between the teeth um, to go on and win it perhaps uh, obviously it'll be a very long season for them doing battle with that Celtic team they'll know from losing to Celtic early last season that any kind of a slip up like that and you might be just kissing your title chances goodbye uh, early on but um, I'll go around the table I'll go to Pat there first with your prediction for the winner Yeah I've gone for Stevie Gavin's um, Castle Bar Celtic I, I just think they've, they've just so much quality. Um, I Possibly they won't go on invincible this year, but I, I just can't see them being stopped. I think they're, they're an incredible outfit. Uh, we'll go next to uh, Joe there. Yeah, I went for Celtic as well. Um, I think they've um, they had such a good season last year, and I, I think the strength in their squad, I, I definitely don't think they'll have it as straightforward as they had with the seven points. I think they'll have real tests along the way this season, especially with Connacht Cup the interprovincials, the Oscar trainer and all that kind of interesting how their squad is at times but I, I think they're the favourites going into the season. Sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with uh, Pan Joe. I think it'll be Celtic again. I think they're just their squad is just superior to everyone else's. Obviously, there may be question marks over with the amount of competitions they're involved in. Obviously, if a few other lads involved in Oscar trainer, you know, that squad will be stretched at times but I think when things settle, I think there's very few, I think there's very, very few teams who were able to put it up to them, and I think Celtic if it sees it anywhere near like last year, I think they're going to end up retaining the title. If if they drop off a small bit, and if someone really pushes them and it's a proper dogfight to win the title, I just wonder like they 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 won it very comfortably last year for a finish. They were mm. well clear like I, if it's a dogfight, would the pressure get to them? I don't know. We haven't I, we haven't seen that yet. I think. When you look back to maybe the near the end of twenty twenty two, it's where Celtic really began to kick on. And one thing he was notice, noticeable, and I remember talking to a few of the Celtic players after games, they weren't losing battles anymore. They were, Celtic had become a soft touch. I mean, if you, in a game of football, yeah, Celtic could play with the best, but when it became a battle, they were found wanting. Ah, from there, like, when it's become a battle, I mean, we, when the odds were against them last year, when they went down to 10 men in, in, in Ballinard, they came through it. So I think if it comes to a case of uh, maybe struggling to cope with pressure, I think they've been able to cope with that. Yeah. We'll look then at our runners up uh, in this division. Uh, Joel, I'll go to you first there for your runners up. I can't actually remember who I put up. I only mentioned uh, Winter Van that Town. I think they've been second uh, the last three years. Um, I think if things go for them, Fergal Ford will probably fancy his chances. He won the Super League in. Uh, I think it was around 2013 sort of time with Balna. They um, he had a good run with them, so he has experience at that level. But um, for them to we'd say have a really good season, I think their squad will have to stay intact. They they, they can't afford big injuries. So yeah, I went with them for second. Um, Pat, you've also gone for Balana in yeah, second. I I just think look, they have so much quality. Um, but I think possibly just Celtic squad is that little bit stronger. And I think that'll be the difference. I think that's why I'm. Thinking they'll finish second. I've gone for Casabar Celtic. I mean, I think they're the two strongest teams in the division. I mean, if one is ahead of the other, I think that'll be the order. Stuart, uh, you've taken an alternative uh, approach. You've gone for Westport United in second place. Yeah, why I think Bala might just finish third. And when I say third, like they'll be a point behind Westport at most, I think. Um, and they'll both be 17 behind <laughs> Celtic, is that it? No, I think that'd be another maybe point or two as well. I think it's going to be very tight at the top. I just think maybe with a new manager coming in with Ball and I, it might take a couple of weeks for them to really fully settle. I mean, you saw with Westport last year when Kevin McNamara came in, took a couple of weeks, took a couple of games for Westport to get into a groove. But now, obviously, they have a full, they've had a full season under Kevin McNamara that Westport have, and... I would. I'd expect. I won't. I don't think they have. There's enough in them just yet to win a Super League title. But I think they're going to go close. Good stuff. We've had uh, people in the comments section here giving their uh, takes on the top three in the division. Uh, Rafael Elias Aquino Quizada has gone for Ballyhane Casabar Celtic. Ballin Robe as his top three. 
Uh, good Thanks, shout there. <laughs> <laughs> John Durkin has said top three Ballina Town, Casabar, Celtic, Westport. Matty Hamilton has said Ballina, Casabar, Westport. Uh, Gary Byrne says Casabar, Celtic, Ballina Town, Ballyhane. Jack Dawson says Westport, Westport, Westport. Oh, <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. um, so we'll look now at our, our dark horses for this division. Uh, Stuart, you've gone for Con Rangers as your dark horse. Yeah, I think Con have made some very shrewd additions in the off season, and obviously they had a very solid season last year as well. I think guys like Dave McHale, Keen McHale, I think is going to could be the signing of the season. Um, I know that might upset a few guys in uh, in S- uh, up in Foxford, but um, I think he's a brilliant player. And obviously guys like Mikey Lothar, Shane Farrell, Owen Prendergast. I think if they build on that they did last year, I and I agree. I think what so the, Pat said earlier as well. If one team does slip off like that, that top four, I would expect Con Rangers are best place to make a push. Uh, Pat, would you have similar reasons for your pick of Con Rangers as your dark horse no, one I, to watch? I, I just think they did a very very solid first season in the Super League. A hell of a lot of young players in a year played in the Super League that they're going to be better. They've added strength to the squad in the, in the two Michaels that, that have come in, Owen Prendergast. So I, I can only see him going one way, I think, fifth at worst for Connor Rangers this year. I, I wouldn't be one bit surprised if they broke the top four if one of them slipped up. Uh, Johnny, when tuning in, uh, we should just say that we'll be moving on shortly to our relegation predictions. So if you have any of them, uh, be sure to get your comments in. Joe. Ballyhane won the league two years ago. How have you down them down as dark horses? <laughs> and like, third last yeah, year. They're just they're just so underestimated. Or they're just not talked about enough. So I just think if things win for them, I think they could possibly have a push at uh, the top uh, the top t- two or three. They um, they probably don't have the same level of squad um, as we'd say one or two of the top teams like Celtic, Westport, or Ballyhane. But definitely they're eleven. And what they've experienced over the last three years, if Bally Haynes 11 stays fit and if Benedict and Nathan Riley Doyle, these lads are firing on all cylinders, like they have Jack Tuffy, Killian Redmond, Darren Ludden was a guy that missed um, a lot of last season, really important uh, left back, and John Batty's returned from Sligo. So I just think if things were to fall for them, they, like with Ashley Stevenson and Joe Redmond, they have a lot of experience on the sideline, and, and I think they could really have a push if things fell for them. but everything would need to probably fall for them for them to kind of do that good stuff so we'll move on now to our picks for relegation and now i do forget yes we have joe and pat uh here first of all given their their picks for relegation joe you've gone for manola and cross malina to drop down um yeah I, I, I just think there's two huge jobs there for the managers i think claire morris and van robel have that kind of energy from promotion that might just kind of drag them through tougher times whereas confidence if confidence goes down either those two camps but Manola still got uh, did they get 18 or 20 points last season so they still got 21 I think Manola yeah, got in the end yeah. still got a good few points um, uh, on the board by the end of the season they are very experienced in the Super League and are grinding out results so that they might be able to we'd say put pressure on the teams around them but I think it's. I think unless the Coggins is our coax back, I think Cross Minor are a huge bother. Uh, Pass, you've gone for the same set of picks. Yeah, I, I think last year Joe predicted Con to get relegated. Would that be correct? Yeah, I, I wasn't going through that. Um, for Ballon Rob? No, I, I just think, like, you know, um, I think it's going. I think it's been four teams, those two places. The two on the screen and probably Ballon Rob and Claire Morris. I think the four of those will be fighting, fighting to stay in the division. And I suppose I, I'm just hoping that the, the lads have worked very hard in Ballon Rope and hoping they'll get enough points to, to finish out of two of those sides. And um, I think just knowing Claire Morris fairly well, I think the bounce for promotion that I think it'll be possible in Manila might, might make the drop. Uh, we'll move on then to uh, Stuart and Paul. I'll, I'll talk through first because I have the same two picks as the other, the, the two bucks there. Manola cross Malina, look at I I just see them as uh, they're going to fall behind the rest of the pack. I think similar to S and F and Glen Hess last year, um, there was a there was a kind of a gulf in, in quality between you know S and F Glen Hest and the rest of the teams above them, and I think it'll be similar for uh, for Manola and cross Malina this year. I just think Manola have had too many problems 
in the last couple of weeks. Consistency in their starting teams is something that was just sorely lacking uh, last year. I think they had four different starting goalkeepers throughout the course of the season. And I mean, you wouldn't mind having four different starting right backs or strikers or something like that. But goalkeepers, uh, it's something you should really have nailed down. You need the same man uh, between the sticks. when, If available, you know, obviously you need a subkeeper and all that. But I, I just think that... Uh, a lot of chopping and changing and who's available and all this and all that and I think think this is just the year that Manola drop and honestly I think it'll be one of the better things to happen in the club uh, to go down a year to get that winning feeling back to galvanise to maybe get some of that spirit back they had about 10 years ago when they were winning a load of cups and stuff like that um, and then cross my line I just you know I think that, that dart that absence of goals that uh, is in that squad right now is just it's it's could be a long year for them I mean we didn't touch on this when we were talking about them as well but I do think there's a little bit of a psychological thing about not playing at your home ground if you know what I mean the playing out in Kilmurray might make a little bit of a difference I just think that you know you see teams coming up here to play their home games up to, to Umbro Park and it's just not the same as you know gearing up and going down the road to your local pitch and maybe that maybe that won't be a factor maybe I'm looking into that too much but I do think there's a lot weighing against Cross Malina this year Stuart you've booked the trend here you've gone for Cross Malina and Claire Morris you're saying I've never made a very odd relegation prediction before no it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like you it wouldn't be like you at all Claire Morris is going to break the top four um Obviously, I'll start with Cross Mind. Um, look, I can't add much more to what you, you have said. I think the absence of goals, I think you made a very good point, Paul, about not having their home ground available as well. I think that's going to be another issue for Cross Mind. Again, I think it's going to be a, a tough year for them. Why I think it might be Claire Morris over Manola, um, as something we mentioned earlier on in the podcast, if it became a battle, if it became like a real scrap, I'd fancy Manola over Claire Morris. Um, Look, I think it's just, yeah, it's, they've, Manola have had problems over the last few years and maybe relegation in the long term could be something that oddly might benefit them. But um, look, I think there's still enough quality there in Manola to survive. I think one thing they may have over Clamaris as well is they may be able to pull off results against teams a bit higher up and make things very difficult. I'm not, Clamar, whether Clamaris have that capability, I don't know because sometimes you, that they, they could be the type of results that could be huge points uh, come the end of the season. So that's why I think... It may be just me that Manola stay up over uh, Manola stay up over Clamaris, but uh, it's going to be very tight. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of our predictions. Looking now at the fixtures in round one, uh, of course, a couple of games off this weekend due to uh, due to Connacht Cup uh, commitments for uh, Ballina and Caspar Celtic. Uh, first fixture there, Clamaris Manola. Um, I'll tell you what we'll go through them and we'll just give a quick our prediction on how the games will go I suppose Clamaris Manola could you call this one lads Pat how do you think this will go I think Clamaris will win that game ok pa- uh, Joe yeah 3-1 to Clamaris pretty specific <laughs> Stuart draw draw ok that's interesting yeah that, that fits into your agenda you, you seem to be gunning for Clamaris to drop here <laughs> whatever it is uh, I would say that this game will probably be a Clamaris win but it's similar to the Ballon Road game Pat it'll be tight and I don't think Manola will have as many chances but maybe one maybe two nil Clamaris I would say uh, Westport United versus Ballon Robe Town Pat I'll go to you last this time uh, I would say for this one I think Westport United will win this game Good few goals, I I would say. I would say good few good good hammering, good humbling for you now, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> He's walking out. Uh, no, I, I think you're a disgrace. I think I think Westport will, will show their class here yeah, in this game. Don't we just take over you there. You did walk that. <laughs> that's, that's where I was going. I was going for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, Westport. I think this. Uh, look, I think Barrow will be okay in the Super League, but I think this will be a bit of a an eye opening for. Experience for three nil to Westport, and is that like a is that a walkover result or is that a regular three nil? <laughs> oh, we're going, we're, we're, we're going, we're, we're going to the game. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure we'll, we'll give it a go. I, I think um, we'll make it difficult for him. Um, I think the pitch in Westport is not in the best condition at the minute. Um, which might suit their, I suppose, possession-based football. So, look, we'll go down and hope, and look, if we can nick a point, it'll be fantastic. But I think the key thing for us going to places like this is that we're competitive and. Um, we grind up results where we can, but look, we're we're not expecting to be beaten the likes of Westport and, and Balnaz and Celtics away. So 
We'll give it our best shot. So what is that? 5-1 Westport, I'll, I'll, I'll write down. Ah, look, I'm going to talk about it next week. I, 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 I live in hope at the moment. <laughs> good man, good man. The uh, might have the flu. <laughs> uh, Con Rangers versus Ballyhane. Um, worth noting that in one of these fixtures last year, I think it was the one in Ballyhane, it was one of the first games of the season, Con Rangers beat Ballyhane, the reigning champions at the time, 4-1, and we were all... Very shocked by that result. I'm sure, Joe, you weren't shocked at all. You, you were well sussed out. Uh, how do you see this one going? Very tight, to be honest. It's probably one of the most awkward games you could have first um, because I, I just think they come under the radar. Whereas if you're playing the West Sports or the Van Lads, you know, it might be easier to motivate lads. But like the lads want to have a right cut at the season, they have to kind of go out and challenge. On Sunday, I think it might be a draw, maybe. Um, I think it'll be very sort of teams might cancel each other out a bit so yeah maybe go for a draw I would say draw as well in this game I think maybe 2-2 two, two or something like that it'll be a good old battle now I'd say um, I'm sure I'm sure it'll be hopping there in, in, in Knockmore on uh, is that Sunday? Sunday, Sunday at half two yeah, Sunday at half two yeah yeah got the prime the prime time absolutely yeah Pash this is a proper game isn't it yeah this is a real Super League game now. these are two quality sides Sam you know, Benita coming up against Don McNamara. Like, there's there's lots of battles around the pitch there. I don't know if Colin Rockledge should be fit to play that game. Like, um, I look, I think it's easy to say that game would be a you know draw, but I'm going to give Con Rangers the edge and go with a two-one victory. Colin Rockledge to score the winner in injury time. <laughs> <laughs> Get about forty done on that. Uh, <laughs> precise. Uh... Yeah. No. No. I. I. I <coughs> Some that game, so I'll go 2 1 win. Sure. 2 0 Ballyhane, Ben Eda to run riot. Ooh. Ooh, okay then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's quite, quite possible. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's on such form, but I'm sure the boys will try and sedge him for 90 minutes. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, it'll be good. Um, It'll be a good trial for him ahead of uh, signing for Khan, I suppose, to just <laughs> display in front of his, his new home supporters. <laughs> um, so yeah, that brings us to the end of uh, this weekend's uh, this weekend's fixtures. We have a couple more listeners' questions. Uh, just one more here. I want to ask you. It's a pretty good one from Martin Hines. What are the panel's predictions on the below for the season? Golden Boot winner. Golden Glove winner, Golden Cleric winner. Uh, we'll go Golden Boot winner and we'll, we'll go around the table. Pat, who do you see uh, take it at home this year? Uh, probably Benny Lavelle. I mean, I see he back from injury sooner. Or, or up, is he? Well, he should be back, I'd say. Yeah, yeah and he was, he was playing the friendly, didn't he, last weekend? Yeah, you, you have to say Benny Lavelle, don't you? I, I, I think so, yeah. 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 Joe, would you be in agreement? Yeah, I was just, as the question was asked, I was trying to think who could, uh, we'd say, get it if you excluded them. Um, I'm going to say Jordan Loftus. Jordan Loftus, good shout. Uh, even with the delayed start to his season? Yeah, I, I suppose in the Golden Boot battle, he's missing one or two of the teams at the bottom early on, but it, I think he's due to be back at the end of March, and that includes uh, the Interprovincials, so Celtic won't have a game that weekend. St. Patrick's, they don't have a game. They don't have the game because of Conn's Cup this weekend. So he's probably only going to miss the Manola Super League game. So I think um, I think he's really up for the season. I think he was disappointed with say uh, to only get seven or eight games last year. He wasn't team of the year. Um, we'd say there was he wasn't even in the factor for football. You know, like the Jordan has the quality to be in those conversations. So I'd say that he has a bit of hunger maybe to have a big season. Sure, Golden Boot winner. Benny Lavelle. Good shout. Uh, I would also say Benny Lavelle. I think he has several Golden Boots at this stage. I don't think there's much stopping him winning another one, uh, especially if I'm going to be consistent in my, my shout for Ballinat to win the, the title. They'll need his goals to do that. Golden Glove, then, I suppose that'll be what's the most clean sheets. I mean, there's not an awful lot of clean sheets uh, in the Super League. Yeah, maybe John Vahey. Um Celtic, I looked at them, they don't keep as many clean sheets. No. Say. I think they'd only one clean sheet against top five teams last year, so it's possibly harder for Kester for it, but I just think Ballyhane, when they're at their dog at best, are well able to keep a clean sheet, so I'm going to go with John Bay. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Like, uh, There's so many good keepers in the division. Like, I think with Ballyhane, you're right, they keep it very tight, they have a good defensive structure. So, it's a good shot. I'm going to go Gary Cunningham. 
Gary Cunningham was a good shout as well. I mean, like even looking at Ballina, there's still is it going to be Mark Duffy starting this year? Is it going to be Emmett Payton? You know, there's that question of them. Personally, I would say Gary Cunningham uh, to keep not an awful amount of clean sheets. As I said, it's uh, clean sheets are very very rare. Uh, yeah, four or five out of eighteen, I'd say at most. I, I don't think I don't think a team is going to have seven or eight shutouts in this division uh, unless the likes of Celtic go on a mad run. You know. Um, Stuart Golden Love Yeah I'd actually Might just tip my hat To John Valley I think Valley Hayden When at their apps Their absolute best Are so tough to break down Good stuff uh, I have a question For you lads uh, Before we wrap this up There's four of us Here on the podcast um, If we were to enter A five aside tournament What Super League player Would we add To this table To make us competitive <laughs> he'd, he'd need to be decent I'd say oh, I'm looking he, around the he, table he'd have to do a bit of everything so, oh, oh. yeah he'd, he'd have an awful sore back from carrying this team so he would yeah, um, I'd, I'd, I'd say we just we'd need to probably strike the four of us just block all, up around I, the would, I would go with an all rounder I'd go Raf Cotaro Cotaro yeah good shout but the problem for Cotaro is if he drops deep who's he going to link with <laughs> <laughs> we won't be fine for it anyway yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe throw someone like Jamie Cawley up top and let him run after everything and fight for everything I, but good I, question I, I think Jeff O'Connor maybe like, he's fierce lively he's a great goal scorer like, and we could just all sit back ping it up to him and <laughs> Jack could do the rest yeah yeah I'd say Darren Brown now would be a good man to go to war with, I'd say. Um, He'd be a good lad to go for a pint with him. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So I think, Joe, did you answer this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Who did you say? Um, I think it's a Jim Coley, was it? Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, that brings us to the end of our first ever live Mayo Soccer podcast. We've had an absolutely excellent time. I've no idea what time it is now or how long we've been at this. Uh, but it's been it's absolutely flown by all the same. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Ryan Gallagher and Kieran Gallagher here. Uh, they've been in the background here making all the magic happen with the uh, the room. First of all, absolutely fantastic. Uh, the graphics you've seen on screen, they've they've been working hard at it, um, and it's I think it's made for a very good show uh, from from where I've been watching and where I'm sure all a hundred plus of you all evening have been watching. It's incredible that. Uh, over you know at times over a hundred I think one hundred and thirty people tuning in to to watch us for chatting for God knows how long um, about uh, this year's Super League and I'm sure more to come in the future from us uh, more podcasts maybe more live shows we'll see how it goes but um, but yeah thanks to everyone for tuning in uh, as I said thanks to the lads for their help there thanks to Pat Joe Stewart for joining me here. Um, to chat all about uh, the Super League and thanks as always as well to our sponsor The Ranch Sports and Music Bar Claire Morris visit their Instagram page to find out more about booking your party event at The Ranch Claire Morris so from all of us here we'll say good night enjoy the season I'm sure we'll be chatting to you in the weeks ahead cheers thanks Paul thanks, thanks guys. Paul.